The boat race is a hugely tactical race. Probably one of the most tactical rowing races in the world. It's not a straight line for 2,000 metres where you just get up and try and hold on. It's 15 to 20 minutes of incredibly intense battling side by side on a course with one single line of stream where the water's fastest, tons of bends, the advantage switching all the time. And those tactics begin before you even get on the water. It's a mental battle all the way down. There'll be a coin toss and the president's going to choose a side. You're going to have discussions as a crew about which station you want to choose, either the Middlesex or the Surrey station. That's an incredibly, you know, crucial part of the race itself. And some crews are better on either side of the river. And that will depend where in your race plan you're going to have certain advantages. What would you pick? Um... Normally Surrey, but it depends on conditions. I think the best. I do actually really like Middlesex. I mean, the fastest crew ultimately wins, so I don't think it matters too much. <laughs> Your opposition's going to know the course the same as you are. They're going to be expecting you to move probably where you'd like to move anyway. And so ultimately it's a case of who slows down the least, who executes what they plan to do the best. And you know, every year there's something. Every, it, it might be small, it might be large, but every year there is something. Who copes with that something better and comes out on top? Last year was a great example of how good tactics can win the race. It sort of became apparent as we sort of sat waiting for the race that the conditions were a lot worse than anybody had predicted. I think it was one of those races where you just, there wasn't a no, there was no slack in there. You had to get everything right. You didn't want anything sort of weird happening. Attention. And there's a red flag that drops and away they go. The newest page to be written in this old, old story. And again. So our Cox Jasper, he saw that the water in the first sort of 1.5K of the race uh, was, was really, really bad and basically took a decision which very, very few coxes in the history of the boat race have ever made. One that would be considered basically suicidal. Cambridge being worn straight off the start there and they thundered out of the start. They really went for it. Can I just talk through sort of how I remember things? Yeah. Um, we were down off the start and it was, you know, oh man, we were trying to get into our rhythm. The, the, the waves were quite bad. You know, we hit some rough water just past uh, the Black Boy. Watch that they're rowing and it's really, really smacking the blades. He knew that the stream potentially wasn't as strong that day and it was a crazy spur of the moment decision that he made, um, which is to leave the fast water in the middle of the river and cut the bend around Middlesex, around the Fulham Stadium. Um, and basically hug the bank. Jasper is making a very, very, very bold move. He's heading over towards the Craven Cottage. We hadn't practiced it, discussed it or anything. He just sort of knows the river well enough. I'm not sure that the water really works this kind of move. And in doing that, he was able to get us a lead that we were then able to hang on to for the rest of the race. But the light blue is taken. They take it all again. Gamble by Cambridge. Oh my goodness, it's paid off in all the boat races. And Jasper Parrish He basically was the single biggest contribution, I think, to us winning the race that day. It's exciting to watch races like that and see how much a cox can influence and for the public to see how much a cox can play in a race such as the boat race, more than any other race. got trilates coming up, so ours on the Wednesday and Oxford's I think are on the Friday. We're going out for a row, uh, we're getting ready for trilates next week. Um, today is just a zone two paddle, um, long one. Uh, stop looking at me, everyone's looking at me. <laughs> to me trilates is a huge, huge opportunity. 
trilates is where we split our squad into two um, evenly matched crews. And if done right, it's just an absolute dogfight the entire way down the course. It's probably hopefully the closest racing that we'll get all season. For a few weeks before trilates, we, we split off into different crews under different coaches as well. And, and those crews really sort of bond together and, um, and a real rivalry, I think, develops between those boats. Can I grab you two? We'll address it basically like a race. If there is any chance of crashing, I'll say X side, three strokes, go. And you're just gonna get a big grip on three huge strokes. Push to be possible. Cool. Yeah, nice. Okay, now we can come back and- Are you still running on the synchronized watches? We've got the finish times for you. The characters are slightly different and, uh, and they really sort of have their own identities and that's a really fun part of the season. It also marks the first time you become a member of the club, so handing out the kit for that race is a very big moment in the athlete season. Getting your kit for the first time um, is a really special moment for any rower. It's something that um, you have to earn and it's something that as president is probably one of my favourite jobs to do. We just did a couple of pieces um, in the kind of provisional trilates lineups. We did two 3K pieces out there, and this is just you know really really good practice for uh, for the trilates race, which is which is happening in a couple of weeks. We get to row the full championship course under race conditions. There is going to be pressure on. There is going to be a media presence. Actually, we want to see how from the rowing to actually before, after, during the race, and how the crews react. The, the intention is that we get really quality, high quality racing. It's a chance for the the guys who are new to the programme to get a bit of a sense of what race day will feel like. It's definitely a chance for our, our new coxes to be able to go side by side. We get a sense of how they operate in that pressure zone. We are all incredibly competitive women and so we all want to win trilates. As soon as you take two seats from the bend, it's really easy to take four. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be entertaining. It's pretty fierce. Things are friendly outside the edges, but when it comes to the race, everyone is, is, is desperate to win. The conditions on trilates um, were biblical. Probably some of the worst that I think I've ever seen. Look <laughs> at the weather now, I'm just seeing it. I want a good race, I want them to learn who wins. It's actually really hairy. We all know that if it's windy and the tide turns, the waves pick up, there's white horses. Water was coming into the boat, left, right, and center. In a way, those incredibly challenging conditions were probably the biggest blessing that we could have had over the course of the season. It was really a baptism of fire for a lot of those athletes. I was ecstatic. They need to know what they could potentially be racing in. Right before our race, we'd, um, we boated, we'd paddled up beyond Putney Bridge, started our warm-up. We had our lightweight crews racing before and uh, they got swamped, completely swamped. I had to make the decision about if we tried to do that, our, our boats would have got swamped as well. Rob kind of came racing over on his launch and basically said the water was just too bad. So we were gonna have to shorten the course to the mile post and start the piece from there. So that was pretty crazy to deal with in the moment. I think at the end of the day, um, racing in those conditions is such good practice for the boat race. I was almost disappointed for Oxford when they had dead flat water. <laughs> the Trial 8s event, as much as testing the rowers, is absolutely an opportunity to, to, to test the coxers. We're lucky to have a group of good coxers across the uh, across the boat club, and at the top end, we've got we've got Joe and Tara. It's really competitive between the two of them. Did you say you're the most competitive member of the squad? <laughs> no one wants to fight me. I've been requested on occasion to tone it down a so that I take that as a good sign. Front, get the blade in, then move. Ready? Go! We've got two really talented people here. Um, <laughs> and modest. <laughs> okay, I need your body set before we get to the catch. You're going to take all the movement out of the catch by rocking over from that back end. Ready? Go! Definitely not a done deal. I think it's a really good place for the squad to be in to have two 
coxes that they know they can trust and have shown they can do it before. I think it's helping me just really keep my focus and just making sure each session looking what I can bring to the crew and the squad. We get on well, I think it can only be a good thing. Would you rather have one Blue Vote Cox or two? We'll just see how it goes. Two Blue Vote Coxes, we're both so good. We're both incredible, I'm gonna say. Obviously we're against each other and that's fine. Um, but the main thing is that we win. Getting the vote would be great. And winning all the races, like that, that's, that's the goal. It's an exciting matchup. It's one that I think both have, have grown from and I think it's both are coming in with, with Blue Boat experience from 2022 with Joe and 23 with um, with Tara. They play a huge part in this uh, in this race. Last two. Last one. So our trial eights were two days after Cambridge, but the conditions for the race were completely different. <laughs> Uh, we Theirs was a very different race. Theirs was almost a test of who could withstand the conditions and I think ours was more a test of racecraft and who could kind of like mentally stick it out more, who, who could push each crew more. It's more a mental game. Well, trial is always a useful exercise, there's no doubt about that one. I think our trial this year very much reflected the season we're having. But I, I think, to be honest, it did advertise the fact that we were perhaps slipping a little behind in some of the targets that we'd set for ourselves at the beginning of the year in terms of where we wanted to be. I think you, you have to have absolute alignment about what the goals are. This is about making the club win, uh, and that that's the job. And if we don't get that, then we start to get tensions, and I think that's where things can get a bit negative. It's not, it's not the lack of trying. I don't want to upset anybody's feelings. Just bloody do that. <laughs> <laughs>